Hello everyone and welcome to the channel for this review of the new Dreamliner, this time by Bravo Airspace. Before we get started, it seems important to mention that I had early access to this aircraft in beta on PC and Xbox. There will be a dedicated Xbox chapter by the way. So a big thank you to Bravo Airspace for their trust. And of course to you, I will remain impartial and highlight the positive and negative aspects of my experience of this plane at this stage. Today after a long dry spell for Adams representing this brand, we are going to plunge back into the world of Boeing. Bravo offered us a fully customized aircraft with what they call the Bravo Liner. So their goal is to give the closest resemblance to the real aircraft as possible. And they created their own custom model from the correct passenger window sizes on the fuselage to a fully customized interior. We attempted, I quote, we attempted to color the cabin closer to the real companies. You will be pleased with the night lightning for those long flights. Flight model has been prioritized. The flight dynamics are based on the weight and balance of the 8 version, as well as for the engine's strengths. Two types of engines are modeled, the GENX and the Rolls-Royce. We have also custom visual effects, APU heat blur, wind vortices, as I have shown in the short trailer at the beginning. Also, they have implemented a light ground equipment and you need to call the tower for GPU and then the shocks, cones and the rear passenger stairs will summon. We have also custom engine sound, interior sounds, which enhance the immersion, the correct flap settings and engine type displayed and a numerous amount of work in and around. And that's what we are going to see. It should be noted that this version is based on the systems of the default Dreamliner. It is therefore imperative that you have the premium deluxe pack as the description and even the title of the add-on suggest. At least there is no room for mistake. The plane is very reasonably priced and comes with 8 liveries, almost one for each continent. That's a great touch. So what is the difference between this cockpit and the standard Dreamliner? And since pictures are worth a thousand words, at least on YouTube, here's a little comparison. What is certain is that Bravo Airspace loves to leave traces of wear and tear and dirt everywhere. I really like the idea. It gives the plane a lived-in look because it feels like it has been used. But I understand that not everyone is a fan, especially when it's come to the cockpit windows. The effect is sometimes quite pronounced depending on certain weather conditions. But at least they are not selling us a copy-paste add-on and that in itself is very pleasant. The Dreamliner's cockpit is already very beautiful, sometimes it feels like being in a space shuttle. But here we also find many little details here and there and that gives the cockpit a little extra soul. So bravo to bravo. Yeah, well, I had to make the joke, right? We continue inside, leaving the cockpit to find ourselves in a magnificent cabin. After several videos and many hours spent in LVFR's A340, the contrast is striking. Here quality breathes. The Dreamliner is famous for its large windows and here the windows are very well made. And that's a good thing. Finally, a new aircraft where you can spend long minutes enjoying the scenery without having a window with big, ugly, polygonal blocks spoiling everything. That's an excellent point of immersion as far as I'm concerned. Let's enjoy this takeoff for a few seconds from uh, KSFO. And that's not all, as the three classes, business, first and economy, are well modeled. Of course, each interior corresponds to that of the chosen airline. 
I wasn't sure where to mention this in the Bravo Liner review, but the graphics chapter seems the most appropriate. If you look closely, you will find lots of little easter eggs inside and outside the plane, which I love. It shows how much the developers have paid attention to the smallest details. And since I mentioned the exterior, let's take a look outside. No surprises here. My older subscribers will know that I have tested their livery packs on Xbox and that Bravo's quality of textures and detail clearly set them apart from the competition. Well, that hasn't changed. We find the same attention to quality, just look at the attention given to the landing gear to realize it. I really like the choices the developer have made to respect the details of the Dreamliner, with opaque windows for example, the same for the cockpit windows, the effect is magnificent and realistic. Graphically, it's almost flawless for me. It's the most beautiful Dreamliner in Microsoft Flight Simulator to date. Of course, an add-on is not limited to its graphics, so let's move on. Unfortunately, there is not much to say about animations, which are kept to a minimum. The various exterior doors open and close smoothly, as do the landing gears, but there is no point in looking for more. Even the seat armrests are static, the cockpit door doesn't open, etc. Well, you get the idea. It's a shame that an aircraft that focuses so much on immersion hasn't added some moving elements. But one thing amazing with this plane is the effects that are native with the plane. When you take off, you can see you can see the wind vortex and the engine condensation. That's beautiful. That's the first time I see those effects natively with the plane, and that's really cool. In terms of sounds, it's not bad, but there is still a lot to be desired. There are no cabin announcements or even other call announcements, no rolling sounds, etc. I know from the developer that the package was already quite memory intensive, so I guess they had to make some sacrifices. I don't know, because Just Flight managed it with the BAE 146. You can even choose different music tracks in the cabin. But the 146 is 5 times the price of this one, and it doesn't have a glass cockpit, and that's a big deal. So, yeah, we can't really compare the two. We are not in the same category. It's true that the Bravo Liner is so well made that we could easily forget which category it belongs to, and it's the sub $20. Show me an aircraft at this price that is as well made. I find the ambient and engine sound convincing, and in the end that's the most important thing, right? Some will find them a bit muffled in the external view or multiplayer, but I think the Dreamliner is a fairly quiet aircraft. The Boeing expert will tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. In this chapter, unfortunately, we will see that the systems are a bit of this plane's Achilles heel. Firstly, because you must own the premium deluxe pack to buy this plane, since it relies on the systems of Asobo's Dreamliner, modified to match the aircraft characteristics, of course. I know Bravo would love to offer a standalone version with their own system, but it's not the same development investment, and I know the choice wasn't easy. But what is strange is that some functions found in the default Dreamliner do not work for me. Another downside is that we don't have a tablet. An EFB, the electronic flight bag, is indispensable in an airliner on Microsoft Flight Simulator today. Yes, I know Braddock didn't do anything with the A380, and yet it's much more expensive, but I'm not sure we should even mention this developer. But it's true that now everyone offers a tablet, even the new A320 V2. It's indeed a bit frustrating not to be able to control the plane access, manage different states of the plane, cold and dark, ready for takeoff. In short, we have to do it the old-fashioned way, 
It's not a deal breaker, but it's missing. I will no longer talk about flight models in my reviews, but rather about flight controls. That is how the plane feels. Indeed, after discussing with several development teams, it is almost impossible to judge the realism of a flight model unless you are the pilot of the aircraft in question, and even then you have to take into account that flight simulator is a mainstream simulator and has its own limitation. So, in the end, I realized it was a bit presumptuous of me to give an opinion on flight models. That's the little anecdote. So, in terms of flying sensation, I found the Bravo liner very pleasant to fly. I have no problems during takeoff. It's a very easy aircraft to take off, and landing are also very cool. It handles as one would expect from a small airliner. If you know the Kuro Dreamliner, I would say that the Bravo feels a tiny bit more responsive on the controls, and that's not unpleasant. So, you understand that Bravo is not offering a study level aircraft, at this price it's impossible anyway. The level of difficulty is comparable to the standard Dreamliner. Just one last point, the SimBrief integration will not be available when the aircraft is released, but I believe it will be ready for the first update. I've been able to test the plane at several airports since the release of SU-15 and well done to Asobo, the results are much better and not to say incredible. I will talk about it in another video. I managed to take off from Paris airport Charles de Gaulle and even from GFK with the Samson Manhattan CD add-on, something that was completely impossible since last year and I didn't have a single black avionics, I didn't have a single frame rate problem, that's crazy. So it's all good in terms of performance for the Bravo liner on Xbox. And here's a couple of sequence from GFK and Charles de Gaulle. And as you will see, there is not a single stutter. So what to think of this new airliner, the very first from Bravo Airspace. Personally, I am completely captivated by the beauty of its shapes and the care given to the details. The cabin is magnificent and it's certainly not something we see every day. Yes, it lacks a few elements to make it an excellent add-on, but given the price of the plane, we cannot expect it to offer the same function as a plane two or three times more expensive, even if we would like so. Personally, I am not very demanding on the depths of the systems, I adapt to everything. But one thing is for sure, I haven't had this much fun flying an airliner in a long time. Thanks for watching, as always, remember to add the like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, it really helps the channel and the more it grows, the more opportunities I will have to review things for you like this one now. Have a great day, bye bye, see you soon.